Captain Benito Chereno hurried aboard his ship. It was ready to sail. A bright sun and a soft breeze promised good weather ahead. The ship's anchor was raised, and the San Dominic, old but still seaworthy, moved slowly out of the harbor of Valparaiso on the west coast of Chile. It was carrying valuable products and slaves up the Pacific coast to Calao, another Spanish colonial port near Lima, Peru. The slaves, both male and female, slept on deck. They were not chained because their owner, Don Alexandro, said they were peaceful. The San Dominic moved steadily forward under a clear sky. The weather showed no sign of change. Day after day, the soft breeze kept the ship on course toward Peru. Slave traffic between Spain's colonial ports in this year of 1799 had been steady but there were few outbreaks of violence. What happened, therefore, on board the San Dominic could not have been expected. On the seventh day out, before daybreak, the slaves rose up in rebellion. They swept through the ship with handspikes and hatchets, moving with the fury of desperate men. The attack was a complete surprise. Few of the crew were awake. All hands, except the two officers on the watch, lay in a deep, untroubled sleep. The rebels sprang upon the two officers and left them half dead. Then, one by one, they killed eighteen of the sleeping crew. They threw some overboard, alive. A few hid and escaped death. The rebels tied up seven others, but left them alive to navigate the ship. As the day began to break, Captain Chirino came slowly, carefully up the steps toward the chief rebel leader, Babo and begged for mercy. He promised to follow Babo's commands if he would only put an end to the killings. But this had no effect. Babo had three men brought up on deck and tied. Then the three Spaniards were thrown overboard. Babo did this to show his power and authority. That he was in command. Babo, however, promised not to murder Captain Chereno, but everything he said carried a threat. He asked the captain if in these seas there were any Negro countries. None, Chereno answered. Then take us to Senegal or the neighboring islands of St. Nicholas. Captain Chereno was shaken. That is impossible, he said. It would mean going around Cape Horn, and this ship is in no condition for such a voyage, and we do not have enough supplies or sails or water. Take us there anyway, Babo answered sharply showing little interest in such details. If you refuse, we will kill every white man on board. Captain Sereno knew he had no choice. He told the rebel leader that the most serious problem in making such a long voyage was water. 
Babo said they should sail to the island of Santa Maria near the southern end of Chile. He knew that no one lived on the island, but water and supplies could be found there. He forced Captain Sereno to keep away from any port. He threatened to kill him the moment he saw him start to move toward any city, town, or settlement on shore. Sereno had to agree to sail to the island of Santa Maria. He still hoped that he might meet along the way, or at the island itself, a ship that could help him. Perhaps, who knows, he might find a boat on the island and be able to escape to the nearby coast of Aruco. Hope was all he had left, and that was getting smaller each day. Captain Sereno steered south for Santa Maria. The voyage would take weeks. Eight days after the ship turned south, Babo told Captain Sereno that he was going to kill Don Alexandro, owner of the slaves on board. He said it had to be done. Otherwise, he and the other slaves could never be sure of their freedom. He refused to listen to the captain's appeals and ordered two men to pull Don Alexandro up from below and kill him on deck. It was done as ordered. Three other Spaniards were also brought up and thrown overboard. Babo warned Sereno and the other Spaniards that each one of them would go the same way if any of them gave the smallest cause for suspicion. Sereno decided to do everything possible to save the lives of those remaining. He agreed to carry the rebels safely to Senegal if they promised peace and no further bloodshed and he signed a document that gave the rebels ownership of the ship and its cargo. Later, as they sailed down the long coast of Chile, the wind suddenly dropped. The ship drifted into a deep calm. For days, it lay still in the water. The heat was fierce. The suffering intensity. There was little water. That made matters worse. Some of those on board were driven mad. A few died. The pressure and tension made many violent, and they killed a Spanish officer. After a time, a breeze came up and set the ship free again and it continued south. The voyage seemed endless. The ship sailed for weeks with little water on board. It moved through days of good weather and periods of bad weather. There were times when it sailed under heavy skies, and times when the wind dropped and the ship lay becalmed in lifeless air. The crew seemed half dead. At last, one evening in the month of August, the San Dominic reached the lonely island of Santa Maria. It moved slowly toward one of the island's bays to drop anchor. Not far off lay an American ship, and the sight of the ship caught the rebels by surprise. The slaves became tense and fearful. 
They wanted to sail away quickly. But their leader, Babo, opposed such a move. Where could they go? Their water and food were low. He succeeded in bringing them under control and in quieting their fears. He told them they had nothing to fear, and they believed him. Then he ordered everyone to go to work, to clean the decks and put the ship in proper and good condition so that no visitor would suspect anything was wrong. Later, he spoke to Captain Serino, warning him that he would kill him if he did not do as he was told. He explained in detail what Serino was to do and say if any stranger came on board. He held a dagger in his hand, saying it would always be ready for any emergency. The American vessel was a large trade ship and seal hunter, commanded by Captain Amasa Delano. He had stopped at Santa Maria for water. On the American ship, shortly after sunrise, an officer woke Captain Delano and told him a strange sail was coming into the bay. The captain quickly got up, dressed, and went up on deck. Captain Delano raised his spyglass and looked closely at the strange ship coming slowly in. He was surprised that there was no flag. A ship usually showed its flag when entering a harbour where another ship lay at anchor. As the ship got closer, Captain Delano saw it was damaged. Many of its sails were ripped and torn. A mast was broken, and the deck was in disorder. Clearly the ship was in trouble. The American captain decided to go to the strange vessel and offer help. He ordered his whaleboat put into the water and had his men bring up some supplies and put them in the boat. Then they set out toward the mystery ship. As they approached... Captain Delano was shocked at the poor condition of the ship. He wondered what could have happened, and what he would find. That will be our story next week. Part 2 As Captain Delano came up in his whaleboat, he saw that the other ship needed scraping tarring and brushing. It looked old and decayed. He climbed up the side and came aboard. He was quickly surrounded by a crowd of black men. Captain Delano looked around for the man who commanded the ship. The Spanish captain stood a little away, off against the main mast. He was young-looking, richly dressed, but seemed troubled and tired with the spirit gone out of him. He looked unhappily toward his American visitor. At the Spanish's captain's side stood a small black man with a rough face. Captain Delano struggled forward through the crowd, went up to the Spaniard and greeted him. He offered to help him in any way he could. 
Captain Benito Sereno returned the American's greeting politely, but without warmth. Captain Delano pushed his way back through the crowd to the gangway. He told his men to go and bring back as much water as they could, also bread, pumpkins, sugar, and a dozen of his private bottles of cider. The whaleboat pushed off. Left alone, Captain Delano again observed with fresh surprise the general disorder aboard the ship. Some of the men were fighting. There were no deck officers to discipline or control the violent ones, and everyone seemed to do as he pleased. Captain Delano could not fully understand how this could have happened. What could explain such a breakdown of order and responsibility? He asked Don Benito to give him the full story of his ship's misfortunes. Don Benito did not answer. He just kept looking at his American visitor, as if he heard nothing. This angered Captain Delano, who suddenly turned away and walked forward to one of the Spanish seamen for his answer. But he had hardly gone five steps when Don Benito called him back. It is now 190 days, Don Benito began, that the ship sailed from Buenos Aires for Lima with a general cargo, pedigree, tea, and the like, and a number of negroes, now not more than a hundred and fifty as you see, but then numbering over three hundred souls. The ship was officered and well manned, with several cabin passengers. Some fifty Spaniards in all. Off Cape Horn we had heavy gales. Captain Sereno coughed suddenly and almost collapsed. He fell heavily against his body servant. His mind wanders said Babo. He was thinking of the disease that followed the gales. My poor, poor master. Be patient, senor. These attacks do not last long. Master will soon bet himself. Don Benito recovered, and in a broken voice continued his story. My ship was tossed about many days in storms off Cape Horn, and then there was an outbreak of scurvy. The disease carried off many whites and blacks. Most of my surviving seamen had become so sick that they could not handle the sails well. For days and nights we could not control the ship. It was blown northwestward. The wind suddenly left us in unknown waters with oppressive hot calms. Most of our water was gone. And we suffered terribly, especially after a deadly fever broke out among us. Whole families of blacks and many Spaniards, including every officer but myself, were killed by the disease. Don Benito paused. He looked down at the black man at his side. Babo seemed satisfied. The Spanish captain saw him take his hand from the knife hidden under his shirt. Captain Delano saw nothing. His mind was filled with the terrible tale he had just heard. 
Now he could understand why the other captain seemed so shaken. He took Don Benito's hand and promised to give him all the help possible. He would give him a large permanent supply of water and some sails and equipment for sailing the ship. And he also promised to let Don Benito have three of his best seamen for temporary deck officers. In this way, the San Dominic could without delay start for Concepcion. There the ship could be fixed and prepared for its voyage to Lima. Don Benito's face lighted up. He seemed excited by Captain Delano's generous offer. But Babo appeared troubled. This excitement is bad for Master, Babo whispered, taking Don Benito's arm and with soothing words, gently drawing him aside. When Don Benito returned, Captain Delano observed that his excitement was gone. Captain Delano decided to talk of other matters, but the Spanish captain showed no further interest. He answered Captain Delano's questions with sharp words, and suddenly, with an angry movement, he walked back to Babo. Captain Delano watched the two men whispering together in low voices. It made an ugly picture, which Captain Delano, found so extremely unpleasant that he turned his face to the other side of the ship. Their actions made Delano suspicious of Captain Sereno. He began to wonder about him, his behavior, his coffin attacks, his weakness, his empty wild looks, was he really half mad or a faker playing a part? One moment Captain Delano had the worst suspicions of Don Benito, but the next he would feel guilty and ashamed of himself for having such doubts about the man. Presently Don Benito moved back toward his guest still supported by his servant. His pale face twitched. He seemed more nervous than usual, and there was a strange tone in his husky whisper as he spoke. May I ask how many men you have on board, senor? Captain Delano became uneasy, but answered, About twenty-five, all total. And at present, senor, all on board? All on board, Captain Delano answered. And will be tonight, senor? At this last question, Captain Delano looked very seriously at Don Benito, who could not return the look but dropped his eyes to the deck. Captain Delano could think of only one reason for such a question. But no, it was foolish to think that these weak and starving men could have any idea of seizing his ship. But still he remained silent. And will they be aboard tonight? Again the question from Don Benito. Captain Delano decided to answer truthfully. Some of his men had talked of going off on a fishing party about midnight. And he told Don Benito this. As he answered, Captain Delano again looked straight at Don Benito. 
but the Spanish captain refused to meet his eyes. Then, as before, he suddenly withdrew with his servant. And again the two men began whispering to each other in low voices. Captain Delano tried to push the worry from his mind. But what were those two strange men discussing? Part 3 Captain Delano went down to Captain Sereno's cabin to cheer him up and say goodbye. Better and better, Don Benito, he said as he entered the cabin. Your troubles will soon be over. The American invited the Spanish captain to come aboard his boat for a cup of coffee. Serino's eyes brightened, but then the light in them died. He shook his head and said he could not accept the invitation. Captain Delano was offended. He was about to withdraw when Don Benito rose from his chair and took Delano's hand. The Spaniard's hand shook and he was too excited to speak. Delano pulled his hand away and turned, climbing back to the deck. His face was troubled. Captain Delano could not understand Don Benito's actions. One minute the Spaniard was warm and polite, then, just as quickly, cold and hostile. Captain Delano asked himself, Why did he refuse to join me? Why is he so unfriendly? Captain Delano got to the deck and was about to step down into his boat when he heard his name. To his surprise, Don Benito was calling, coming quickly toward him. Captain Delano was pleased and turned back to meet him. Don Benito warmly took his hand, with more energy and emotion than he had ever shown. But his excitement seemed too much for him, and he could not speak. Babo then came between the two men, and put his arm around Don Benito to support him. Clearly, he wanted to end the meeting between the two captains. Walking between the two men, Babo went with them to the walkway. Don Benito would not let go of Captain Delano's hand. He held it tightly across the servant's body. Soon they were standing by the ship's side, looking down onto the American boat. Its crew turned up their wondering eyes. Captain Delano did not know what to do, as he waited for Don Benito to let go of his hand. He wanted to step down into his boat. But Don Benito still firmly held his hand. Then, in an excited voice, the Spaniard said, I can go no further. Here I must say goodbye. Farewell, my dear, dear Don Amasa. Go! Go! And he tore his hand loose. Go, and God protect you better than he did me. Go, Don Amasa, my best friend. Captain Delano was deeply moved. He would have stayed for another minute or so, but he caught the eye of Babo. It seemed to say, This is bad for Don Benito's health. And so he quickly took the short step down into his boat with the continuing farewells of Don Benito, 
who stood rooted at the ship's side. Captain Delano sat down in the back of his boat, gave Don Benito a last salute, and ordered his men to push off. The boat began to move. Suddenly, Don Benito sprang over the side and came down at Delano's feet, and he kept shouting toward the Spanish ship, his cries were so wild that no one could understand him. An American officer asked, What does this mean? Captain Delano turned a cold smile upon Captain Sereno and said he neither knew nor cared. It seems, he added, that the Spaniard has taken it into his head to give his people the idea that we want to kidnap him. Or else, and suddenly Captain Delano shouted, Watch out for your lives! He saw Babo, the servant, on the rail above, with a dagger in his hand. He was ready to jump. What followed happened so quickly that Captain Delano could not tell one incident from another. They all came together in one great blur of violent action and excitement. As Babo came down, Captain Delano flung Don Benito aside and caught the rebel leader, pulling the dagger from his hand. He pushed Babo firmly down in the bottom of the boat, which now began to pick up speed. Then Babo, with his one free hand, pulled a second dagger from his clothes and struck at Captain Serrano. Captain Delano knocked it from his hand. Now he saw everything clearly. Babo had leaped into the whale boat, not to kill him, but to kill Captain Sereno. For the first time, he understood the mysterious behavior of Don Benito a prisoner under sentence of death. He looked back at the Spanish ship and got a clear picture of what its captain had escaped. On board the San Dominic, the shouting rebels were raising their axes and knives in a wild revolt. They stopped some of the Spanish sailors from jumping into the sea. A few, however, jumped, while two or three, who were not quick enough, went hurrying up the topmost wood arms. Captain Delano signaled to his ship, ordering it to get its guns ready. When the whale boat reached his ship, Captain Delano asked for ropes. He tied Babo and had him pulled up on deck. A small boat was quickly sent out to pick up three Spanish sailors who had jumped from Captain Serino's ship. Captain Delano asked Don Benito what guns the rebels had. He answered that they had none that could be used. In the first days of the rebellion, a cabin passenger now dead had destroyed the few guns there were. The Americans fired six shots at the San Dominic, but the rebel ship moved out of reach. Small boats were armed and lowered. Captain Delano ordered his men into them, 
and they moved out to capture the rebel ship. The boats caught up with the San Dominic when it was nearly night. But the moon was rising, and the gunners were able to see where they were shooting. The rebels had no bullets, and they could do nothing but yell. Many of the rebels were killed, and the San Dominic was captured. After an investigation, Babo was found guilty of stealing a ship and of murder, and was hanged. Captain Benito Chireno never was well again, and he soon died. So ended the terrible story of the slave revolt aboard the slave ship, the San Dominic.